Welcome back to Wing Yee and Buffalo Style. Of course, all week long, we've tackled some impressive programs in the area. One talks about going back to college, but we haven't really talked about paying for that college tuition. That's what we're tackling right now. Let's start this segment off with a few statistics. According to the College Board, the average cost for tuition last year was $30,000 and $94 for private colleges in the U.S., but 50 private colleges now cost more than $60,000, which is up from just nine colleges in 2012, 2013. These major price increases have caused the total student loan debt to surpass $1 trillion. Here to help break down some of these numbers are college finance consultants Rick Ross and Andy Lierdini. Now, I have to start off the segment by addressing some of those numbers because when we're talking about $1 trillion of student loan debt and price tags of over $60,000, a lot of people are asking, why does college cost so much? Uh, colleges over the last 20 years have increased about 4 to 5 percent annually, their cost. And uh, most people's paychecks have only increased about 1 to 2 percent. So the college has really taken advantage of the ability to raise prices without anybody really kind of raising any red flags. And when we're talking about a prospective college student who's looking at their career, dealing with those price tags can be pretty difficult. I mean, you don't want to sacrifice what you want to study because you can't afford for it. For it. Mm -hmm. So what are some of the challenges that parents and students are facing, it, facing when they're trying to go back to college? I think that there's two challenges. The first being affordability. Uh, the cost of colleges you opened up with is at an all-time high. The second is emotion. Uh, and colleges are a big, big business. They market all of their marketing that comes in the mail and emails and telephone calls to a 17, 18 year old. So that 17, 18 year old feels that they can make that college decision. Essentially, they can only borrow so much in their own name. And parents love their kids, some more than others, but uh, uh, they definitely um, need to uh, uh, work with their child to pick the right school that's got the best return on the investment for them. Now, I like that you said that they can only borrow so much, because mm -hmm. I remember when I was looking at colleges, it was still during the time where people were saying, go to the college of your dreams, study mm -hmm. what you want to study, don't worry about debt because you're going to come out and you're going to be able to get a job. Mm -hmm. Now, that changed a little bit, so we're talking about trends in student loans. So for people that are gearing up to borrow, mm -hmm. are there any things that people are doing now that they should know about? I mean, just the, the fact that a student as a freshman can only borrow $5,500 in their own name. And I think a lot of people think uh, as a student they can borrow a lot more. That's it. As a freshman undergrad, $5,500. So the parents are going to have to find ways to pay for that rest of that bill, no matter what it is at what school. And that's sort of where you come in as college yeah. finance uh, consultant. So when someone sits down with you, they're gearing up to pick the college. They know that the student can only borrow as much as you said. What's the next step when you're talking to them? The next step is trying to figure out what their major is, what their grades are, and then talk to the parents about how much they want to spend or borrow on college. So many times, many families here in Western New York, they're dual income families. They never really sit down and talk to their child about how much they can afford. And if you can do that early on in the process, then everybody's happy. You need to treat it like a business transaction and not an emotional transaction if possible. So how do you start to tackle some of those emotional ideas? I mean, a kid gets into their college of their dreams, they're geared up to go, it's not financially possible. What are some tips for parents that are struggling with that right now? Well, early on, get, have the conversation across the table. You know, to talk about prices and, and really if you're going for a certain program, let's say to be a teacher, talk about you come out, here's what the starting salaries are for a teacher. So the student has an understanding of, hey, listen, I, if I spend a lot of money, really, what is, what's the return? If the student is looking for a little bit higher priced career, for example, engineering, you, know, you take a look at, all right, here's the median salary for engineering and what are we going to spend on school. So those early conversations about not only what they're going to spend, but what a student's career is going to look like. And that might be hard to tackle when you're only 17, exactly. and the idea of borrowing $120,000 is a little, a little daunting. So for people that are having this conversation at home right now, mm -hmm. want a little bit more information, want to sit down with you, where can they find more information? I think the best way to find us is on our website, collegefinancinggroup.com. We have individual numbers. We have an 800 number. They can email us. We also have a great uh, Facebook page, Twitter feed, so they can contact us uh, that way as well. This is a very important and critical conversation to have, especially when we're exploring so many different college programs in the area. Thank you both for coming in. Thank we're going to change gears a little bit from this serious financial conversation to something a little bit more colorful, and that's Lauren over in the Dura.